happen. It's at this stage where you might be like, what the hell? How are you ever going to join these, merge these vertices up and, and things like that? Well, that's really a Maya mentality way of thinking. It's certainly not getting into the ZBrush flow of things because we've got Dynamesh. So I'm going to show you this now. Let me show you a, a different way. I'm going to save this and come back to it. But basically now we've sort of got the basics of our model in place, the, the big parts anyway. Happy enough for me got everything we can sort of move the eyes up a bit and we can move this around but it's really now time that the big parts of the model are done so we want to join it all together and this is when ZBrush gets cool because we can use Dynamesh and Dynamesh is the best thing since sliced bread so let's get into it shift F and a couple of things here so this is really a very polygonal so it's very low res and this is very high res but ZBrush really helps us we've got about 80 90,000 points here we can actually handle a lot more in ZBrush so Control D will actually add a division so this is a bit like on my hotkeys and my alt s or the poly smooth and we're sort of clicking in there and adding more divisions so that's we're smoothing that out but we're also adding a lot of polys in the head there and we're now at 1.4 million polygons because there are a lot a lot a lot of detail there in the mesh, like tons of polygons. But that's okay for ZBrush because it can handle this if you got a decent machine. If you don't, you can not do that last step. Just don't go quite as high as I have here. So I'm now going to hit two and we're going to continue to sculpt and just fix that up a little bit and really want to move that in. So we've still got this, if I shift P, this mask by poly groups that it is here. I can leave that off because we really don't need sub tools very much anymore. This mask by poly groups. And we're just sort of preparing this for the Dynamesh. So the Dynamesh will join everything together automatically and we can continue to sculpt on our merry way. So uh, let's do this. So now that we're here, as long as you've got your object sort of to grid proportions in the ZBrush frame, then Dynamesh will work fairly well at 128. It's like sort of usually my starting point for a rough joining of things. So with that Dynamesh button on in the interface, it's the easiest found there. There is this Dynamesh and ZBrush section with more options. Simply hold control like you would to get rid of a mask in ZBrush and click and drag, but there is no mask. So what it does is it goes to the secondary default mode. In this case, Dynamesh is on. So it's going to Dynamesh our guy together. And you can see that now our mesh has turned very, very dense. Okay, now it's still kept the poly groups, even though they're a bit nasty and stuff. So they're not really super useful anymore. But more importantly, the mesh has just got really dense and it is actually joined now. So what it's doing, it's doing a big sieve I call it like a sieve because this is how I understand it at least. From each grid point direction, it sort of like hammers down loads of polys. And you'll see that it has a bit of trouble on the 45 degree parts of the mesh. Like here and here, it goes into, it puts a lot of tries and stuff down. It's not the most perfect sculpting mesh, but because it's so dense, you can get a very long way and get some really nice models in pure Dynamesh just because of the denseness of the models. So this is the beauty of ZBrush and now we can just continually Dynamesh and add things. It is a lossy thing, so I'll get into this in the Dynamesh section of the site where I explain it in detail, but just for now, it's like this magic tool. So now that we got that, just come out of that mode. Now, if we try to smooth across this crack, it's gonna be a bit bad and it's not really gonna work. And that is because we've still got that master polygroups up to 100. So we switch that back to zero, remember that shift P. Now, when we hold shift on this, we can really smooth out those areas and get a really nice sort of curve and you see it's so dense it sort of kept some of the faceting of the polygons which still weren't high enough in that neck and a couple of little tricks we can use is alt r is like a relax mode and you can pump that up a bit and it'll just smooth it all out a bit you can see that's done it for the whole model there's also polish which will do a similar thing and sort of like polishes out the whole model and just smooths it out a bit there but i'll generally go pretty heavy and just start smoothing some stuff out there by holding down the shift and just really working that sort of model like that. So now we're in a pretty good place to start sculpting. So that's it's just a really quick way of getting to a, a like kind of a base mesh starting point, which is actually a very dense base mesh for starting your model. And I know that's a lot of steps and things, but it really gives you a good overview of ZBrush and how you can just join stuff together. A couple of notes here. One of those is, of course, you could just do all that in Maya, probably even a little bit easier to definitely block out your model. So I'm a big fan of blocking in Maya, gozy your mesh into ZBrush, and now we can totally just use the Dynamesh straight away. So we've gone through a lot of stuff here in order to get to this stage. Why not just quickly do it in Maya? This is very simple stuff in Maya. Use the poly tools in Maya because they are stronger. There are polygon modeling tools in ZBrush and if you're spending a lot of time in ZBrush, probably worth you learning those. But my general rule is that Maya is the king for polygon modeling and ZBrush is the king for sculpting. So if you sort of separate it that way, use the tools for what they're strong at. 
So now that we're here, I'm going to do something a little bit different and just throw this away. I'm actually going to save this. So let's go file save. And I have saved this a couple of times already while I pause the videos for you guys. But we'll save this into that ZBrush folder. And now I'm going to save this to the Dynamesh done phase. Save that so that we've got it. Make sure you do not use the document save, by the way. Document save is saving a 2D image. I'm going to explain this in a bit of detail. Okay, just be really wary of that. And do not save as Z tools either because you'll lose your a certain things like image planes and stuff, I believe. Save as there. Do not use that save as. I'll explain that in later videos in the, the more sort of comprehensive version of this. So now what I want to do is I actually want to go back to the version where we just had the sphere and I build this whole mesh in a completely different way, like in a much more ZBrush sort of sculptor centric way, just to give you an idea of a, a very different way of working in ZBrush.